Greetings. This is a late in the day anarchy moment. Earlier this week, I suffered the misfortune of hearing the radio. And while listening to the radio, the news <laughs> came on. By news, I mean government controlled propaganda. And I heard on the government controlled propaganda that the ACLU had clashed with the city or the government of the People's Republic of Fort Collins over a ban on homeless people panhandling and that the government of the People's Republic of Fort Collins, the city in which I live, if you're listening to the podcast for the first time, backed down and gave in. And at this point, I made a comment, something to the effect of, I think we should just kill all of them. And one of the people who was in the room with me got offended because this is a person who has been homeless himself in the past. And he said, what do you mean kill all of them? Why would you want to kill them? And I said something to the effect of, well, because they're stinking, filthy, disgusting parasites who are you know, ruining society. And he said something to the effect of, the homeless people, that's not what they are. And I said, Wait, whoa, whoa, hold it, I'm not talking about killing the homeless people, I'm talking about killing the fucking government. It, the government, it's the fucking parasites that are destroying society. I don't see any homeless people being parasitical and destroying society. Anyhow, that happened. <laughs> And that made me decide to actually do a little bit of fucking research and find out what's going on because I thought all of this was interesting. So here's what I've got. I've got, and the notes are in the show notes and links to the sources. I just want to read all this stuff and I want to comment on this. Fort Collins will no longer ticket people who passively panhandle in the city under a settlement with the ACLU. Deal announced Monday, federal lawsuit of going. ACLU accused the city of going too far in cracking down on the panhandlers. So you see, there was no problem with cracking down on the panhandlers. It's just they went too far. Right? There's no problem with abridging people's freedom unless you go too far. Right? I love this kind of fucking language. Well, you can kill some Jews in the concentration. Just don't go too far. It's okay to go out and rape women, but don't go too far. So Fort Collins, here it says, this is what this one says, Fort Collins has agreed to permanently drop some parts of its panhandling law, such as barring people from soliciting donations from anyone over 60 or near ATMs or bus stops. So you're a panhandler, right? You're whatever, this homeless guy. You're out here on the street. It, this is the law in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, or it was, right? Remember, this is the city where you cannot smoke, not just a cigarette, but you cannot smoke an electronic cigarette outdoors on city property, even if it's a park or a natural area, even if there's nobody else in sight, it is illegal to, to smoke or suck up on an electronic cigarette on city owned property, right? Freedom because you own your body. Okay. So you're a panhandler. You're a homeless person. Maybe you're not homeless. You're for whatever reason, you're a panhandler. Somebody's walking towards you. If they're over 60, it's illegal for you to ask them for money. Now, how do you know if they're over 60? Are you supposed to stop them and ask for identification? Furthermore, if, pe if old people are so fucking wonderful and intelligent and they're like, the, you know, they're like this antithesis, not antithesis, that's not the word. They're like this this twin of the medicated generation, right? Like the young people, oh, we're the future of America. And like, and everybody, well, old people are a national treasure. Old people are so wise. Old people are so intelligent. Okay, so if old people are so fucking intelligent, why do they have to be protected 
from somebody asking them for money. All right, anyway, however, the city is keeping restrictions on aggressive panhandling. Panhandlers who try to intimidate people or touch or grab people while asking for money can still be ticketed. I wonder if that means we're going to ticket politicians. Politicians spend most of their time, right? If you don't vote for me, my opponent will take away your welfare check. If you don't vote for me, my opponent is going to cut Social Security. If you don't vote for me, the terrorists are going to come and kill you. Politicians panhandle for money constantly by intimidating people. The ACLU filed the lawsuit last month on behalf of four homeless people, Greenpeace, and a 76-year-old woman. So at least Greenpeace has admitted that they are panhandlers, which is what they are. I was wondering why I hadn't seen any filthy, nasty Greenpeace hippies in Old Town Fort Collins lately. This explains it. Here's another article. It says this. The city of Fort Collins has agreed to stop arresting, ticketing, citing, otherwise interfering with individuals engaged in passive solicitation. As a part of blah, blah, blah. The LCU filed the lawsuit early February alleging that both Fort Collins panhandling ordinance and its, enforce, and its enforcement by local police violated the First Amendment. According to the suit, the ordinance was overly broad and prohibited peaceful, polite, non-threatening requests for charity. In addition, the ACLU presented evidence that the overwhelming majority of the city's enforcement had been directed at individuals who were only passively asking for charity by displaying a sign, an activity that was not actually prohibited by the challenged ordinance. Of course, we know that something doesn't have to be illegal under the ordinance for it to be illegal. Illegal is whatever the police officer standing there at the time thinks is illegal. The article continues, First Amendment protects the rights of all people, regardless of economic circumstances or social status, to make peaceful, non-threatening requests for charity. Yes, I'm sure that's what the Founding Fathers had in mind when they wrote the First Amendment, was they wanted to make sure everybody had freedom to ask for charity. Yes, that would be exactly what was going on. The city also agreed to pay the plaintiffs legal fees and cost and to provide the ACLU with 45 days advance notice of any future proposals to reinstate or revise the repealed provisions of the ordinance. Next one. Next one. Silverstein, insert Jew joke here. Silverstein, the lawyer, he's the lawyer for the ACLU who was representing the ACLU in those thing. Insert Jews as money grubbing lawyers joke here. You call me anti-Semitic if you want. It's not my fault that the ACLU, non-profit, left-wing, liberal Democrat organization has a Jew as their lawyer. I didn't fucking do that, but I'm damn sure making fun of it. Insert Jew lawyer joke here. Silverstein on Tuesday morning said the group obtained copies of about 100 citations issued between August 2012 in November 2014, two-thirds of them were written for people who were taking part in passive solicitation, like holding a sign. Now, of course, these, solicita these solicitations, well, they kind of are solicitations. Tickets are solicitations for money. I mean, the police are essentially panhandlers who have the ability to kill you if you don't give them money, right? A actual panhandler has to ask you for money, and if you choose not to give them money, then you don't give them money. They don't beat you up. They don't threaten you. They don't put you in a cage. They don't kill you. Now, a fucking disgusting pig, who is a representative of the statist government, is also a panhandler. They want money. So they see you and you make a right-hand turn. They pull you over. They say, you didn't put your turn signal on. Well, you can't prove your turn signal was on. They give you a ticket. The ticket is for money. You have to pay the government money. If you don't pay the government that money, then the police will come for you and they will get more fines on you and they will put out more 
what do you call them? The, the court system will try to fine you more, blah, blah, blah. Eventually, they put out a warrant for your arrest. They catch you. They put you into a cage. That's far worse than a panhandler sitting on the corner with a sign that says, please give me some money. Yet, police officers are respected. And homeless people are looked down upon. And of course, there are some homeless people who are scumbags. But then, there are some police officers, a small minority, who are not scumbags. So police officers are probably 80% scumbag, 20% good. Homeless people are probably about 80% good and 20% scumbag. I would much rather take my chances with the homeless people. Back to reading. The 29-page document also includes allegations from Greenpeace Incorporated. Greenpeace Incorporated. Left-wing hippies. They sure do hate those fucking corporations. we got to save the earth from the corporations. So Greenpeace Incorporated is here to save the earth from the corporations. And all you have to do is give them your money. The 29-page document also includes allegations from Greenpeace Incorporated that Fort Collins police have started targeting the activists' canvassing procedures in Old Town. An officer in December repo reportedly told a canvasser those actions of soliciting donations were still illegal, according to the complaint. Now, I got to admit... Getting rid of the Greenpeace hippies in Old Town doesn't bother me that much. Kind of, again, this is one of those moments where I know statism is wrong, but I I I kind of have a hard time not supporting the police telling the Greenpeace fuckers to get the fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> right? It's it's kind of like government funded abortions. I'm not in favor of abortion and I'm not in favor of governments funding things. But if we could pass a law that said every woman who gets pregnant and isn't married has to be forced to get an abortion paid for by the government, I support that because it would save a lot of money that would otherwise go to welfare. So it's wrong, but you know what they say, two wrongs don't make a right. And anyone who believes that has obviously never tried. You know, it's like that big line of bullshit that I always see whenever you watch a movie. The good guys always come to that point where they say, but we can't kill the bad guy because if we kill the bad guy, we'll be just like him. I love the way nobody in the movies has ever heard of self-defense. If you when, when you kill someone who's trying to kill you, you are not just like them. If you kill someone who is trying to rape you, you are not just like them. If you kill someone who is trying to harm, abduct, kill, rape your child or your wife or your mother, or your grandmother, or your best friend. You are not just like them. That is some bullshit that has been fed to you by the state in order to keep you stupid, to keep you subservient, to keep you servile, to keep you a slave. And when someone tells you that the police are not panhandlers who have guns, they are wrong. The police are almost exclusively. Do the police occasionally do something that isn't panhandling? I'm sure they do. Most of what they do is go around and hand out tickets and citations. That is panhandling with a gun behind it. But of course, the ACLU never, never took that approach because the ACLU is as statist as you can fucking get because they're a bunch of stupid, filthy fucking liberal Democrats. And, oh, I'm getting distracted. Oh, never mind. 
Eee. Hold on, I can't I can't make a computer work because I'm retarded. Oh my god, that's offensive to retarded people. Fucking deal with it. You will get over it. All right, back to reading. Quote, Greenpeace canvassers have ceased soliciting donations in downtown Fort Collins. Greenpeace wants to be free to continue its peaceful... It, peaceful... Sol Whoever wrote this didn't fucking spell check it or didn't grammar, didn't proofread it. Greenpeace wants to be free to continue it peaceful solution... So 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 oh, God damn it. Solicitation of donations without fear that police will enforce the challenged ordinance against its canvassers. The sweet the suit reads, well, I can write, but apparently I can't fucking read. Okay. Fort Collins Municipal Code restricts where and from whom individuals can solicit charity. Individuals are barred from panhandling within 100 feet of an ATM or bus stop or soliciting during nighttime hours and acting in a manner that is threatening, intimidating, coercive, or cohesive, or obscene. Again, the police, when they tell you they want your money because they claim you didn't come to a full stop at the stop sign. Can they do that during nighttime hours? Yes, they can. When they do it, are they being threatening? Yes. Are they being intimidating? Yes. Are they being coercive? Yes. Are they being obscene? depending on your def definition of obscenity? Possibly so. And what's so magic about being within 100 feet of an ATM? I mean, where does this shit come from? What's, what's the magic? Again, is, is the fucking panhandler supposed to have a goddamn fucking tape measure and make sure there's no ATM within 100 feet? I mean, this is just fucking gayer than shit. Right? This is the fucking state. There's the police can threaten and intimidate for fucking money all they want, anytime they want. But if you're a person, if you're not a member of the state, if you're not wearing a fucking costume and you don't have a shiny badge, you can't solicit for money at night. Another article goes on says this, as Fox 31 points out, the portions of the ordinance that have been suspended pertain in part to bans against panhandling in certain locations, including near ATMs, bus stops, and restaurant patios. However, the suspension of these rules is only temporary at this point. Something stressed by ACLU of Colorado legal director Mark Silverstein, insert Jew joke here, in a statement about the development. Oh, you're so anti-Semitic. Mm-hmm. Yep. Liberal Democrat Jew working for the ACLU, making lots and lots of money. All right. I didn't, I didn't capture. Okay. Hold on. I, I fucked up. Okay. Somewhere I didn't actually copy and paste that. So here's the deal. They did this thing. The city of Fort Collins is paying. Here's, here's what the city of Fort Collins is paying out. And by the city of Fort Collins, I mean the taxpayers of Fort Collins are paying for this. If I remember correctly, it was $83,000 in legal cost is going to the ACLU, is going to Mark Silverstein. Insert joke here about Jewish lawyer working for nonprofit organization to protect the rights of people and getting $83,000 in the process. And then the four homeless people the ACLU was so valiantly defending each got, wait for it, the four homeless people each received $100. The ACLU, a left wing, statist, nonprofit organization that cares about poor people and freedom and is run by a Jewish lawyer, got $83,000. Of taxpayer money. 
the four homeless people, or I say they're homeless people, the four panhandlers, I don't know for a fact that they're homeless, but we'll, we're going to go down that path. We'll find out. The four panhandlers who the ACLU was representing got $100 each. Now, the stupid people among you cannot see how the fact that these people are poor and that they are panhandlers benefits the ACLU. This is why the ACLU wants more. It's just like I talk about femistatists. Femistatists want more women to get raped because every woman who is raped is a victim who then needs femistatism. And because all these women need femistatism, that gives more power to the state. It's the same thing here. The ACLU doesn't actually give a fuck about these panhandlers. This ACLU wants these people to be poor. The ACLU wants these people to be on the street asking for money because that is the source of the ACLU's power. Remember, if there were no poor people, if everybody had plenty of money to live and nobody had to go out there and panhandle and thus there were no laws against this stuff for the ACLU to fight, this would be one more example where the ACLU would have no purpose. And if you do enough of that, if you have enough freedom that the ACLU doesn't need to exist anymore, then people like Mark Silverstein, insert Jew lawyer joke here, have to go get real jobs where they actually produce something. But because he is a left-wing statist, he can't produce anything. One hundred fucking dollars. The ACLU got 83000 You people are fucking stupid. All right. Let me move on. Where's what I'm looking for? Here is what I'm looking for. This is from the ACLU website. And I've got the link to this article. It's called Meet Our Clients, Fort Collins Class Action. February 10th, 2015, blah, 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 filed. Yep, police have issued dozens and dozens of citations enforcing unconstitutional laws that criminalize, blah, blah, blah. Our clients include four individuals who are homeless, Okay, so apparently they are homeless. Our clients also include Nancy York. <coughs> mm, excuse me as I fucking die. <coughs> yeah. A 76-year-old resident of Fort Collins. Because she is over 60, I assume they mean age, not IQ, because I don't think her IQ is over 60. Because she is over 60... York is classified as at risk by the law and therefore cannot be approached by people or organizations requesting charity. She objects to the classification and believes that she is fully capable of deciding for herself whether or not to make a donation to a person or an organization. Okay, let's, God damn it, you, and by the way, I'm reading this article cold. I have not read this blog post. This is a cold reading. You people are so fucking stupid. You statist, I fucking, God, you should all be exterminated. Okay, I've just said this a thousand fucking times. I just have to, you should all be exterminated. So the law, the law, it's the law. You have to obey it. It's the law. The law here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins says that because people over 60 are, quote, at risk, unquote. There's quotes around in the fucking article and therefore cannot be approached by people organizations. So, People over 60. What the fuck does this mean that they're at risk? Okay, so if people over 60 are so fucking at risk that somebody can't come up and ask them for money, should people over 60 be driving automobiles? If people over 60 are so at risk 
that people can't come up and ask them for money. Should people over 60 be allowed to vote? Now, we know the answer, those of us who are ANCAPs. Nobody should be allowed to vote. But if these fucking old people aren't smart enough to handle someone walking up and asking them for money, then these fucking old people are not smart enough to vote. You're either smart enough to make decisions or you're not. This whole status thing where people are smart enough to make decisions when they're voting Democrat, but not smart enough to make decisions when they vote Republican. You know, when people are smart enough to make decisions about donating to the campaign fund of Obama, but they're not smart enough to make decisions about whether or not they should give money to a panhandler. I mean, this is all just bullshit. People are either smart enough to survive or they're not smart enough to survive and natural selection will figure that out. All right, let's read about the clients of the ACLU here. Again, cold reading. I've not read this before. Lawrence Beal, Ball, B-E-A-L-L. He's, looks, I've, he's familiar. I've seen him around. Lawrence Beal. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm not going to fuck it up. Lawrence B. did not expect to spend his retirement on the streets. Well, guess what? A lot of people don't. But Social Security is not going to exist much longer. If you're sitting around right now, if you're not saving retirement money, I suggest you get ready to spend your retirement on the motherfucking streets. Okay. But when his former employer was bought by another corporation... His pension was cut to 500 a month and he found himself unable to pay rent. Why, yes, because you see, I'll count on the corporate pension to take care of me in my old age. Okay, people, those days are over. I'm t the fucking gold watch days are done. If you think the fucking retirement program from whatever stupid corporation you work for is going to take care of you when you're old, those days are over with. Who's been telling you that for a long time? It's me. That's who. To make ends meet, he began panhandling in Old Town Fort Collins, an activity he dislikes and finds embarrassing but necessary. To avoid sleeping outside on frigid winter nights, Larry uses money he gets from panhandling to buy food and coffee at, an all, at all night coffee shops so he can stay warm. Every day, Larry is forced to choose between violating the law or going hungry and cold. And of course, again, the ACLU cares about him so much. That's why Larry, Lawrence, excuse me, not Larry. Oh, Larry, I guess they, his, it says Lawrence, but they call him Larry in the article. Maybe he goes by Larry. Lawrence, the, the ACLU cares about Lawrence so fucking much. That's why the ACLU got $83,000 for their Jewish lawyer. But Larry got a hundred bucks because, oh, they care about the homeless so fucking much. The ACLU is nothing but a bunch of filthy fucking scumbags. I despise everything about the ACLU. We care about Lawrence so much. That's why we made sure he got a hundred dollars. Fucking Jewish lawyer. You're anti-Semitic. No, I'm just not afraid to call people who are pieces of shit, pieces of shit. He's found, I'm back to reading, we're talking about Larry. <clears throat> Larry has found that people leaving bars and restaurants in the evening are more likely to give him a couple of quarters, as are people stepping out of their cars who often have loose change in the vehicle. But Fort Collins panhandling law forbids him from asking for help in these circumstances. Larry is very careful to respect the personal space of those he asks for help and is always gracious and thankful to those he approaches. Bicycle Larry, as he's known, tries to show his appreci appreciation for strangers' generosity by paying it forward in whatever ways he can, often by fixing bikes for other homeless people. 
Next one, Jeffrey Allen. I've seen Jeffrey Allen like just recently. He's been in the same spot in Old Town Fort Collins. I've seen him a number of times. Jeffrey Allen spent 30, because they have their pictures of these men in the post. And women, we're coming to women. They have the people's pictures. So when I say I've seen them around, that's how I know. Jeffrey Allen spent 30 years traveling the country as a truck driver, a job that he loved. His career was cut short nine years ago when he was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, too bad they didn't have Obamacare back then. He would have gotten free health care and the cancer would have just mysteriously, magically vanished because Obama, well, because Obama, I mean, are, are you racist? I mean, hope and change. Obamacare would have just made that cancer just Poof, magically disappear. It's gone. Ooh, poof, whoosh, blown away on the wind. Multiple major surgeries and cancer treatments have left him disfigured, disabled, and unable to hold a steady job. Social Security disability checks have not been enough to pay for the basic necessities of life. But how could that be? It's the social safety net. It's the government. Obama is the president. How can his social security disability checks not be enough? Obama cares about him. Obama cares about poor people. Social security is wonderful. How can it not be enough to pay? Social Security disability checks have not been enough to pay for the basic necessities of life. And so Jeff has spent the better part of the last nine years living on the street, forced to beg for money to pay for food and shelter. Needing help but not wanting to be obtrusive, Jeff spends many days sitting on a low concrete wall or bench in downtown Fort Collins where outdoor cafes and banks are nearby with a sign asking for assistance. And he does. I've seen him there. He makes sure to stay out of pedestrians' way, and he does, and treats passerbys with kindness and respect, which I have seen him do, regardless of whether they are able to offer him any spare change. In order to make enough money for the bare necessities, he must sit in an area with a good amount of foot traffic, often within 100 feet of an ATM or an outdoor cafe. And yes, he's in a prime location, and yeah, he's right there next to a cafe. And is sometimes forced to panhandle after dark. I wouldn't say he's forced, but then again, the idea that... And what is... What is... You can't panhandle after dark. The sun has gone down. We have to have, this is the state, this is statism. There's different laws for when the sun isn't in the sky anymore. I mean, what kind of fucking horseshit is that? Now, for those of you who don't know where that law comes from, let me explain it to you. That law is because women are allowed to vote. Because who is it that is terrified when the sun goes down? It's women. Because women are so terrified that every man alive wants to rape them. Women, the feminist, I shouldn't say women, that's not accurate. Femistatist, Femistatist walk through their life thinking every man around them wants to rape them because they're just so desirable. And because men are all such perverts and sickos. And so this fucking terror of a man talking to you at night, that, that, that right there is 100% feminism. That is 100% femistatism. That is 100% strong and independent women who are allowed to vote. The idea that there should be different fucking laws about what people are allowed to do when the sun is overhead and when the sun's not overhead. <coughs> so it's wrong to kill Jews, but only in the daytime. Or only if they're lawyers for the ACLU. His polite, unobtrusive request for assistance violate Fort Collins' panhandling ordinance. Next up, 
Abby Landau doesn't feel comfortable. The fuck is my water bottle? Shit, it's not here. It doesn't feel comfortable verbally asking people for aid, so she sits silently on public sidewalks and benches with a sign asking for help, only speaking when she's spoken to. Aw, like a good little sheep. Despite her unobtrusive panhandling, she's been told by police repeatedly to, quote, move on, unquote, when panhandling and has been ticketed for violating Fort Collins Ordinance for simply sitting on a public bench and displaying her sign within sight of an outdoor cafe. Ah, the government cares about homeless people so much. Fort Collins, the government here, they care so fucking much. Oh, they care. They care so much. The police are your friends. Homeless and destitute, Abby can't afford to pay the fine for violating the ordinance and is therefore often chosen not to panhandle, even though she's in desperate need of assistance. Susan Weimer is re recently became homeless when she was forced to move out of her Section 8 apartment after the housing authority declared her unit unlivable. I don't know exactly what a Section 8 apartment is. I'm assuming, emphasis on the word assuming, assuming that that is the like, low-income housing. Isn't low-income housing somehow or another monitored, if not controlled, at least monitored by the government? So if her unit became unlivable, and if the government cares so much about homeless people, instead of spending money to pass and enforce laws against panhandling, why doesn't the government of the People's Republic of Fort Collins spend that money making the fucking Section 8 apartment she lived in livable again so that she could live there? But again, because the state is fed by homeless people. More homeless people increase the power of the state. The state has no incentive to prevent people from being homeless. Her current homelessness and severe health problems, which have rendered her unable to work, have forced her to panhandle in order to pay for life's necessities such as food and medicine. Okay. Now, I've been pretty nice to everybody so far, but if you're capable of sitting outside all day asking for money, you're capable of getting a job. Considering most jobs these days involve sitting in a cubicle and pushing buttons on a computer. She could probably get a job. She just probably went to college for something like liberal arts. Okay. Susan believes the Fort Collins community is generous. Is this the same Fort Collins community that voted for the government that is making it illegal for you to panhandle? Doesn't sound very generous to me. She frequently asked for their help by flying a sign near ATMs and outdoor cafes or by using her voice to politely ask for spare change or leftover food. She also holds her sign at night when there's good foot traffic. But of course, all of that is illegal in the People's Republic of Fort Collins because this is the choice city. It's a wonderful place to live. <laughs> uh, I predicted Fort Collins would go to shit and it's starting to go there. Susan, fuck, it's 40 minutes. This, I should have just done a, I should just called Randy. We should have done an episode of Stating the Obvious with this. Susan is careful to never get in the people's way when she is asking for help and always expresses gratitude when passerbys choose to donate. She has found that many people who are older or disabled like her are eager to, eager to help. Despite the peaceful nature of her panhandling, the police have told her time and time and again the way she panhandles, such as at night and near ATMs, violates the panhandling ordinance. Not, warn, not wanting any trouble with the police because she wants to be a good sheep, Susan always follows their directions to move on even when she desperately needs charity. She's worried that the ordinance will make her have to choose between courteously asking for help and violating the law. Well, violate the fucking law is what you should do. 
Nancy York is a successful businesswoman homeowner and Fort Collins native. Now, Nancy York, she is a successful businesswoman and she cares about the homeless people so fucking much that is she fucking helping them? She's a homeowner. She could take a homeless person to her home and they wouldn't be homeless anymore. How many times have I said this? Let me say this for those of you who might be new to the show. Whenever people say they care about the homeless, they are lying. Anyone who tells you they care about homeless people is lying. I will now prove that to you. All these people who care about the homeless have homes. All you have to do, if every person who said, I care about homeless people, took a homeless person home with them, allowed the homeless person to stay in their home, take a shower, take a bath, get them some clean clothes, help them find a job, help them save up some money, you could eliminate homelessness. In less than seven days, because it would take a while to find people and stuff like that, in less than seven days, you could get every homeless person into a home and start helping them to amass money so they could not be homeless anymore. But nobody does that. Everybody wants to talk about, it's just like the ACLU. Oh, we care about the homeless people so much. We got $83,000. The homeless people got a hundred bucks. Look how much we care. People who talk about caring about the homeless, same fucking thing. I care about the homeless. Is there a homeless person living in your home? No. Well, then fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. She has long been concerned with homelessness and poverty in her hometown, just not enough concerned to take a homeless person to her fucking home. Right? She's all fucking concerned, this fucking stupid feminist cunt, Nancy York, she's all fucking concerned about homeless people, just not enough to let a homeless person stay in her home. She has long been concerned with homelessness and poverty in her hometown and considers herself a community activist. Well, I consider myself a flying pig, but guess what? I'm not a flying pig. Some people would say I'm a pig, but I can't fly. It doesn't matter what you consider yourself. All that matters is what you are, what you do. She has been approached countless times over the years by panhandlers and nonprofit organizations soliciting donations, but has never felt threatened or bothered by it and often chooses to share the money she's earned with those in need. But Nancy is 76 years old and in Fort Collins it's a crime to ask her for aid. It's not a crime to ask her for votes, but it's a crime to ask her for aid. Oh, isn't the state a wonderful thing? Nancy is fully capable of making her own decisions on whether or not to give and does not appreciate the city's paternalistic and stigmatizing ordinance forbidding panhandlers to approach those over a certain age. No, but she does appreciate the city's paternalistic and stigmatizing ordinance forcing people to not be allowed to smoke cigarettes. She's totally okay with that. She's also okay with the paternalistic and stigmatizing ordinances about having to be 21 to drink alcohol. She's totally okay with the paternalistic ordinances about only three people who aren't related to each other can live in a house together. Okay, she's a fucking nasty, filthy, liberal Democrat cunt who doesn't give a fuck about the homeless. She just saw this as an opportunity for her to get free publicity and to get attention. In addition to being insulted by the age restriction of the ordinance, Nancy takes issue with the government's attempt to push poor people out of sight and keeps public spaces open only to those who are well off. She is, however, okay with public spaces only being accessible to people who are not smoking cigarettes or e-cigarettes. That's okay. She enjoys talking with those facing poverty. She just doesn't give a fuck about helping them 
and homelessness and believes that everyone has a right to be seen and ask for help in public places if they need it. I guarantee you if a right-wing organization was out there asking for money, not homeless people and not Greenpeace, I guarantee you she would not feel the same way. In conclusion of this short episode of Anarchy Moment, in conclusion, nasty, filthy, smelly parasites who walk around on the streets begging for money should be eliminated. And I'm not talking about the homeless. I'm talking about the police and the government.